let's go ahead and get some modeling done. Um, something I like to do is I like to go to uh, create polygon primitives and start with a cube. That's usually how box modeling starts is with a cube. And on your cube, when you go into the channel box editor, uh, under inputs, poly cube, click on that. Now what we can do here is we can change the height, width, depth, all that stuff, but we can also go in and change um, the subdivisions. Now if I just hit two, if I just select all of them and hit two at the bottom and then hit enter, it will apply them. And now what we've got is uh, this cube that's been subdivided. And if I go up here to this little uh, wireframe shade on, I love this, when I click off of it, it still shows my wireframe here with that. Um, now that I've split this, and I've gone, I've done a couple steps, uh, because, you know, people tend to be lazy and, you know, I'm not, I'm not above that. Um, I like to duplicate this and hide it down the bottom. And I personally call this kit bashing, where I will just leave a bunch of spare parts down at the bottom and sometimes I need them and I, you know, it's faster to grab that and duplicate it and bring it up than it is to go in and physically create and polygon this. And when I need a new shape, that's what I'll do. But as far as uh, getting started goes, I'll, I'll just kind of make one shape and then start moving from there. So what you can do now is um, I'm going to turn on the, uh, what do you call it, x-ray? Ghost view, x-ray, what do you want to call it? And um, let's get in and kind of just get started. What I do want to turn on is the symmetry. So I'm going to hold down W and left mouse click, go symmetry, and turn it on. And what that does is, it, like you would think, it's the symmetry. So let's go and uh, actually let's grab all of these. And we're just going to pull them straight up to the top. Now, this blade is going to be a little funky because it is not symmetrical, but we're going to start the basics and blocking out, assuming that it is. You want to stay as symmetrical as possible for as long as you possibly can. It just uh, saves you a whole lot of headaches down the road. And in Maya 2024, for some reason, sometimes you have to double marquee select it for anything to happen, and it drives me crazy, but... That's, that's Maya 2024 for you. The iterations are always fun. Okay, so let's go and do, and let's leave that for now. Um, and just for a block out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is shift, right click, and hold it. And then you can kind of take this and drag in any direction. Now, shift, right click has most of the tools that I use most often. Um, Multi-cut is what I'm looking for. And if I hold shift, I can put an edge loop around the whole thing. I can go either direction if I want to based on where I'm hovering over. Um, if I hold uh, control, excuse me, control and then shift, it'll snap to percentages. All right, so say we'll just drop it to 50% just because that makes it easy. Now I'm going to go in and go back to vertices, which is just uh, hold down right click, just right click by itself. And if you right click, you can do this to edges, select edges, object, you can select the object. Um, UVs we're not going to use just yet. Um, the face, I can select individual faces. Vertices I use probably more than anything else. The other thing that if you ever accidentally, you go to vertices and you accidentally hit this for text face, uh, don't freak out. Just go back and put it to vertices or something like that. It's not a big deal. This is kind of a troubleshooting feature. So if I have faces that are sitting on top of each other or pieces that are where they shouldn't be, then you can, you can see them more easily. It kind of does an exploded view of these faces. So back to vertices. And we'll uh, select this twice because it's my 24. And we're going to bring this in here. And let's go to the multi-cut. And let's, uh, I'm going to snap it to 50 again. And when my tool's still active, let's do 50 again. W to move out of that. And then we'll just kind of pull these in. Um, and sometimes you want to snap things. So if you say I grab this and I want to snap it. Now, the different snapping pieces, if you want to do up on the menu up here, this is snap to grid. Uh, this is snap to a curve. This is snap to a point or a vertice. This is project to center, which I don't really use much. Um, this is snap to view planes, and then this is uh, make objects live. That's a whole different thing. That's for retopoing things and, and redoing the surface or something. But what I do want to do is I want to take this and I want to snap it to the vertice. So I'm going to hold down V, V is in Victor, and slide this up. 
and as I slide up, it might just go to the nearest kind of magnetically snap to it. But if I hover over what I want it to snap on, I'm still holding left click and V and it'll snap right to it. And if I want to snap it here, 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 wherever, and then I let go. We'll go ahead and do that down here as well. Hold down V. Now, because I'm working on the center, anytime I work in the center, I do not ever, 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 ever grab anything other than the arrow. I want to move the arrows up and down in the center because I do not want things to go off center. That makes the symmetry go away and symmetry can be your best and possibly worst friend, but uh, uh, you threw your symmetry off and, and things get a little hairy. So I will say we'll go to hold V, snap, hover over where I want it to stick, V, hover where I want it to stick, grabbing the arrow, holding V, grab where I want it to stick. So now just makes things a little nicer, a little more even. And heck, why don't we just even kind of do that? So it's still kind of blocky, but right now we're just doing a block out. So that's that's more than sufficient. And we'll grab this, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it in here for now. Um, these don't need to be snapped, but, you know, just for uh, consistency, we'll go ahead and do that. So now, let's see, let's take a look at... Uh, it is okay also to make things out of separate parts. So we've got this blade and I've got a hilt, I've got a handle, I've got the back part of the handle, um, the jewel, all these other little embellishments. These can all be separate parts. You do not have to just extrude or bring things out consistently, right? So I'm gonna grab this, Control D to duplicate, and we're just gonna bring this up. And again, I wanna keep it center, so I'm grabbing my arrows. Uh, let's actually change the view. We're gonna go back to 3D. I never moved this back. I might've just grabbed my image plane, stick it back here. Something else I can do is uh, I like to put my reference images into a layer. So with the image selected, or any object for that matter, select it and hit this very, very far uh, little icon. This says create new layer and assign selected object. And that will do just that. Refs, okay. Again, I can't just hit enter. This is one of the only places in Maya. Hit save, should be good. And now I can hit this V for visibility. And it brings it back. Now this block is hiding in there. Um, again, let's bring up the uh, uh, wireframe shaded so I can see everything a little bit better. And this blade's actually a bit thick. So now that's the thing is you're gonna wanna hop back and forth between different views. I, I do it constantly and spacebar, hover over the, the window you wanna go to, spacebar, it'll just take you all over where you wanna go. Um, and just tap it. Now if you hold spacebar, it brings up this menu, which this menu is fantastic. All of the menu sets that exist up here you can access in here with spacebar. Now, if I uh, right click and do spacebar, it will give me different bits and pieces. So if I go spacebar, right click, now I can change my view in this pane if I need to. So if you accidentally, you know, you're, you're moving quick and you do this and you're like, oh no, top view. Uh, okay, now I'm stuck on top view. You can hold it and then go back to perspective or whichever you, you need to work with. This is looking very thick, so I'm just gonna go right click over to Vertex. And let's see, let's, uh, so I did just shift select to grab multiple pieces, making sure they're all selected. I always like to go to the back of the object and just make sure that uh, everything is selected there. I'll bring this in here and let's just do this for now. I'm going to modify this more later, but just to get us started. All right, now with this blade, it looks like it is quite a bit thicker down here than it is with the rest. So I can kind of see these edges, these shadows in here imply that's a little thicker. Uh, long term, I may want to weld it to the rest of the piece because it looks like it does carry through. But uh, we'll start by doing separate ones just because it's a little easier. Let's see, then we're going to go in and I'm going to grab everything. There's that. All right, let's bring this in. We'll do that for now. Again, just to block out, we're starting slow. Marquee select twice and they'll grab everything. Uh, there may be a way to change that, I just have not yet discovered it. So if anybody out there knows, uh, maybe leave me a comment or something, because it drives me crazy. I went from my 2022 to 2024, so maybe it happened in 23, I don't know, but it drives me up the wall. Um, let's come down in here. Um, now, if I want to do a uh, insert an edge loop, I'm going to go shift, right click, multi-cut again, 
and again, if I hold down, if I just do shift straight up, it'll just put it in the middle. But if I do control, it'll give me an edge loop. If I do both, it puts them at this gradient degree. It certainly does not have to be at a certain degree. In fact, if you kind of put it where you want it in the beginning, that's that's more advantageous long term. Grab these twice. And right now, I'm just doing this bottom piece. I'm not going to worry about these just quite yet. In fact, so that being said, let's bring these in. And up in here. All right, so again, super blocky. That's all we need for just getting started. And what I like to do is go with general to specific. I will hop around and I'll build base parts for everything, even if it's not perfect. And this gives me references so that I can kind of measure against other things. So once I've got one thing in, I can move to the next and just I just just rough it out first. It's kind of like sketching before you actually finish your drawing. You just you just want to get an outline. You just want to get a sketch going. So we're going to go to create polygon primitives. And what I want to do is I'm going to grab a cylinder. And again, this pops up if, I've, if you've already got your channel box uh, layer editor over here. Uh, if not, here's that inputs. Now, on the subdivision axes, it usually pops us out at 20. I like to say in powers of two, so two, four, eight, 16, etc. You can use D-res stuff, it's a little harder to up-res stuff. So maybe we'll even just go, we'll go 16. Leaving it at powers of two, I now have an edge loop going forward and sideways. And then pieces in the middle that are consistently round or consistently even. If I were to have 20, this would not be the case. 20 if I just left it default. So if I wanted to go and select, say, every other one to, say, de-res it, for example, um, I would, you know, maybe do leave that one there, select this one, every other, every other, every other, every other. Now, if I were to go and delete this, shift, right click, delete edge. Now I don't have this piece here. This is the biggest reason, right? Um, I can go in and try to recut it back in but my, my polygons aren't even anymore. I gotta pull it out manually, it's, it's just ugly. So um, what we're gonna do is go back and if you delete the history, this option will go away. But this is why I just get into a habit of making a good one to start. If I go this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and if I wanna de-res this from 16 to eight, just cut it in half by selecting every other. Uh, we'll go shift, right click, delete edge, now look at that, I've got one cut here, and I've got one cut here, and everything's still nice and even. So, powers of two. I'm going to control D, duplicate this, and then just bring it down out of the way. Now once you duplicate it, see this one I can still work with. This one I cannot. So in fact, we're actually going to switch those. That way, if we duplicate this, and I wanna make this into, say, eight. Right now, this one's stuck at 16. This one's at eight. I can still modify that. So, so now let's get back into shaping. All right, I'm gonna bring this up. Symmetry's on this time because it's the entire object. So what I can do here is uh, this is about the width here. I'm just gonna grab the top of these. And bring them up and again notice how i've got my symmetry on it puts this off center that's a good clue as to say oh yeah your symmetry is not on symmetry let's just, let's just shove that up to the top and we'll come over here and we'll take a look at something real quick this button this will isolate isolate select this little dotted line with a little uh, cursor by it love this i don't know a hockey for it so if anybody out there knows or finds one let me know if i had these selected Again, and I go to try to, it's like, oh, I just wanna like change the shape and just make this smaller. Uh, if I grab this, it's gonna make things skew. We don't want that. All right, so if I just want these and I want to scale this in, I'm gonna go W, hold down W, left click, symmetry, turn it off. And now I can scale without a problem. Yeah, Maya has a bunch of weird little things like this. Once you learn them, they become second nature and you just kind of get used to it. but. Uh, it does take uh, kind of take a minute. Um, also, I'm not going to use these faces in here. Uh, if there's a face that you're not going to ever see, there is no reason to have it. There we go. So I'm not going to use those. All right. So I'm just going to delete them. Just delete key. Um, another fun way to make selections a little easier 
is if you were to say select marquee, select the whole thing, right? Selected everything. And then if I shift select the parts I don't want to select, I can shift select. Uh, now, if I want to inverse this, I can go shift marquee select. You have to select the whole object, but it will swap what you just had. So that's a good way to, if it's hard to select something, you can select the inverse and uh, makes that makes that easier. So again, what we want to delete are these caps. So we'll delete those. I'll go back and show everything. I might just make this one piece here. I was going to do separates, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. All right. So we'll come down with uh, my symmetry off. Grab these in here and bring them out. And then I'm going to add uh, multi cut, which is shift right click. And now I'm holding down control. Drop this in here. Let's add another one. Just control. And essentially everywhere that we've got these in and outs going on. Um, I'm going to do one right here. What I like to do is uh, put one in the middle and do what I call general to specific. Now, if it's if it's a piece like this, and I know I'm going to go all the way in, and here I'm going to go all the way out, that's a different thing. But in this one where I want to get this nice gradation, this nice rounded edge, I want to do something a little different with that. So, okay, we'll go W to get out of the tool. And we're going to open that up a little bit these as well. Open that up a little bit. Now see in here, I do want one more, the G key. G as in uh, gator, and then hold down control. Drop one in there. Alrighty, we'll do this one. And this one, and right now, this is rough. That's okay. Let's leave it there. All right. And we'll make these out, and then W to go up a little bit. Select twice. You might not need to select twice. Maybe it's something wrong with my Maya, but when I, I upgraded like a month ago, and it's killing me. Um, the R key goes to scale. E, by the way, goes to rotate. So we have... Uh, uh, w, E, R, it's back to R, bring this in, uh, that's already out, and already we've got like a decent shape, this isn't too bad, now right in here like I talked about, let's let's go general to the specific, so we've got this defining this big piece first, okay, I um, was working with some people and uh, we were doing a barrel, and we're like, okay, what's the best way to do a barrel, you could do a lattice, you can do a whole bunch of vertices, or like edge loops and, and do all that, but I feel like that you spend a lot of time fighting the extra vertices. So what I like to do is just uh, do this, like now cut this in half. Now cut this in half to 50%. And now, again, W, grab these both again. Shift select. Does it grab them all? I hope. Um, now what this is going to do is when I, in theory, you would think if I just scale this, it's just going to scale it out, right? No, this one goes in all directions. See how that moves it up? I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change views, spacebar, come in here, and if I'm on the orthographic side, I don't see this for the bottom, but I want to grab this green square down here, and I want to grab that, and I want to move this. And the cool thing is once I grab this, if I hold down the middle mouse button and go in and out, I can kind of like, you know, keep that going without having to grab that square again. I can even go back to a different view. And if I don't touch anything else and don't mess with it, I can still do this middle mouse trick where I just kind of like grab that and, and slide it around. All right, I'd say that's that's decent for now. We'll go back to this view. Now let's work on an extrude. So you can extrude faces, you can extrude edges. You can technically extrude vertices. I do not recommend it. It does weird stuff. In fact, why don't we do it for giggles? Shift, right click, extrude vertex. Yeah, I, this is just madness. Let's just not even go there. So control Z. Now, if I want to select the whole edge loop, going and doing shift, click, that just takes all day. So I'm going to click on one, hold down shift, double click the one next to it, and this will select the whole edge loop. And this will work in all directions. So I select one here, double click. 
That makes life a little easier. So select one, double click. And now what I can do is I can go shift, right click, extrude edge, and as is, it will give it to me going the same direction that those normals were facing off of that edge, right? Which can work. Uh, if you turn this little switch on off, right? Now, this will actually go down and I can control this a little more uniformly. And that's what I wanna do here to start with. Now, something about extrude that uh, gets a little crazy, and this is where I might even do a separate video on this, but extrusions are kind of the bread and butter of box modeling in Maya. The downside though, is if you go and say, I don't know, say for kicks we can go, this face, double click, select the whole, whole edge loop, and I'm like, okay, I wanna go extrude. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, uh, doing a thing. And that's uh, okay. That got kind of weird. That's not what I want. So I go undo. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then, you know, if you click off of it or, or do something else, and then I go and I'm like, okay, I need to reselect it. And I'm going to extrude faces. And then I go and I pull this out. And, you know, everything seems fine, right? Well, problem now, though. Ah, there it is. You're thinking, oh, okay, cool, I, I extruded, everything's fine, I'm uh, good. Now what we have here now is we have uh, these faces, or these, these uh, vertices are on top of each other, and this is bad. This will mess up things when we go to UV things. This is bad geometry. Basically, in the 3D space, things, unlike the real world, can exist in the same space at the same time, and that can cause a few issues. So. If I were to marquee select it, it would grab all of them and you wouldn't be able to tell. You have to select them one at a time. Click, click to check. And that's how you would know. You can also do vertex face. And you see this line in here. That implies that you have done an extrusion and there are now a face that's been squashed together that should not be there. If you see a line like this, that's, that's bad news bears. There's one down here too from our extrusion. Um, so, a really good way to fix this, if you take, we'll just do this one object, isolate it, go to vertices, I grab all these, okay, look at my poly count, this is where having this heads up display is super helpful, which again was in display, heads up display, poly count, okay, um, if we go to mesh tools, I'll tear this off just for a second example, 256 is how many vertices I have here. I'm going to merge. Oh, 224. So it took all of those vertices in here that were on top of each other, and it merged them. And if I do my vertex face, hey, look, that line's gone. That can save your butt sometimes. So fun little trick there. So I did an extrusion. This isn't the extrusion I want. Um, but, you know, let's run with it. So... Something I can do, I can go to Shift, right click, Merge Vertices. Now, if I had some selected already, I could do Merge to Center, and it sucks them all in the middle, but we're not doing that. We're going to do the Target Weld tool. This one's pretty cool. So something's selected. So if I do this, it's going to pull that into it. That's not what I want. So click off of it so nothing's highlighted. And in fact, let's make sure our symmetry is back on. Symmetry on? Okay. So now go back to... Same tool, vertices, target weld tool. And this, with our symmetry, will do all the other side too. And just the one you want to move to something else, and it just sucks it right in and welds it together. I don't know, sound effects help. Maybe it's an old old habit from Bob Ross. You guys ever watch Bob Ross, The Happy Trees? He'd always make his little sound effects. All right, so I also... I don't want this, but it's not in the middle of a model, so um, let's go to Faces. Okay, I'm going to select one, double-click the next, get the whole edge loop, and then just delete, just nuke it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Vertices, I'm going to select one, double-click the next, get them all. And now I'm going to go to Merge Vertices, Merge to Center. That brings them all to the center, just like that. So that works really well for something like this. Now, something else that uh, some of you might be noticing is well, we have 
quads over here, so we have four-sided shapes. These, uh, these you know, faces have four, four sides each. You never want a shape that has more than four sides. Five-sided and up, they call it an N-gon. N is in Nancy. Uh, N-gons are bad. They make life hard and they can mess up your model. So you want, so you want them to have four sides or three. Triangles are okay too. Um, when you're modeling in the process of, I like to stay in quads as long as I can, and then I will triangulate later if needs be. Um, triangles are not bad, but they can cause hiccups in the meantime. Uh, if I want to select an edge loop, I cannot do that the same with a triangle. So I can get it here because those sides work. But if I wanted to get, I don't know, say multi-cut, look at this. I can't, I can't multi-cut in here. I can draw around but my, my edge loop thing isn't working like it would. It is up here, but it doesn't here. So that's what I'm gonna keep triangles away for the most part until the end. In this case, I'm not worried about it because if I did have to draw something in, I, I could do it later. Uh, or another workaround for that is if I decide to go and draw one in really close to that, and then W, and then say we'll grab the vertices, and then I can grab this and bring it in and go off of symmetry and bring that in and now I kind of have this uh in fact let's leave it let's let's call that just a little bit round down here so I think it just had a little bit of roundness to it so so that's kind of workaround to get you know if you need to add an edge loop just puts up next to it and pop it down closer this guy's super thick too we don't want that to be too much in the center it's gonna be thicker but out towards the outsides it's gonna be thinner okay symmetry is not on so I'm gonna turn that back on and that again is W left click W left click, symmetry on. Let's grab those. Let's leave that one for now. Let's grab those. Let's grab those. All right. You can probably hear my cats yelling at me because I closed the door on them. All right. So I'll let them in here in just a little bit. They're cute, but they'll climb up all over my keyboard. And again, we're just blocking stuff out. We're not getting nuts. Um, in fact, down here, that's a little bit thick on the geo for a block out, but it's, uh, it's a decent start. Um, let's go up here. And all right, so this sword. Mm, this blade's going to be a little interesting. I did this one on purpose because, for one, it's different than uh, some of the other ones we're working with. And on top of that, it's just it's just unconventional. It's just like this serpentine kind of thing. I really like that. Um Let's grab these. Uh, now, again, uh, I can leave my symmetry on if I'm using this, but the minute I try to scale, scale does weird stuff with symmetry. Symmetry is, like I said, it can be your best friend and your worst enemy, depending on what's uh, what's going on. Okay, so sometimes you can kind of do um, is imagine, okay, this is actually in the middle to over there. So if I were to take this and eyeball it about the center of this, if you imagine, that would be halfway over. So it's kind of like a way to eyeball. Oh, look at that. Pretty darn close. So you can kind of use things like that to be like, uh, well, if this is my middle and I put this in that middle, you know, kind of works. Okay, this grid's driving me crazy. If you want your grid to stop being displayed right over here, this little icon, tap it. Okay, so we're going to go shift, right click, multi-cut. And I'm going to want to do one of these about every major swoop. Okay, um, now see how this is kind of triangular? It's following the shape of the nearest thing. What I can do is since I'm in the orthographic front still, and I can kind of see that up here. Um, what I can do with the multi-cut that's kind of cool is I can take, go off the model, hold down shift, drag it over, and it will snap in certain degrees. And this will cut all the way through the whole thing. Now, if I go all the way over, I don't want to sit right on top of my other edge loop here. Like, that could be problematic. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my multi-cut with a shift right click again. And I'm going to draw this over here. Now, that didn't go all the way around because I just did it on that front a little bit there. Let's go on the back side. 
what I like to do is I like to grab it instead of just like clicking it. Sometimes I've had them go like right next to it, drives me nuts. So I will go find the edge and slide it down and it'll stop right at that other piece. I'll do the same thing. Slide it, stop. All right, I'm gonna grab all these and we're gonna shift them over. And now, because I have this edge loop going across here, it pulled my middle with it. Again, I've got a triangle up here, but that's not the end of the world. My poor cat sounds like he's like wailing. He really just gets lonely. He's a, I've got two Bengal cats and they're super nice, but they, oh man, they don't like to be left alone. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Maybe I need a keyboard protector. Keep you off of it. Alrighty. So that one yelling, his name's Kato. He's super cute, super sweet. But he just likes company, doesn't like me alone. Even though he's just on the other side of the door, he's yelling at me. This poor guy. <laughs> I have to, might have to stop here and go grab him. All right, so we got our blade done. We got our handle done. We got the hilt started. Let's uh, let's go here and do something else with this hilt. Let's um. Well, I'd say blade's not done. Let's now we've kind of moved it over. I'm gonna do something else. So this is a trick that remember I started with that cube, and I had this edge loop in here, and I really I could do two things here. I could just push this out. But if I do that. You see how it's inconsistently doing it? That's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm gonna go shift right click, delete edge, get rid of it. And I'm gonna select, because this isn't merged together yet, this still has an edge loop all the way around. I'm gonna select one, double click the next, and that will select edges even this way in like a ladder fashion. Now what I don't want, is I'm pretty sure I still have some faces down here. I'm gonna unselect these, and I will show you why here in just a quick minute. Um, in fact, let's, let's do symmetry back. Pop, 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 pop. All right, let's start there. All right, shift, right click, merge collapse edges, collapse edge. Look at that, look at that blade. Nice and easy way to do that. I can always add more edge loops and add a little more definition there, but that's a pretty slick way to do that. Um, now this in here, looking at our concept art, is probably still sharp up to this point. So let's do that on this one as well. And if I want to redo the same action, I haven't done anything else since G. G is in Gator. I don't know what else is better. G term. Uh, all right, maybe let's bring these in a little. See, I usually grab vertices, but in this case, it actually might be a little faster to grab the edge. I don't want these to be somewhat consistent, because if this thing was sharpened and it flares out at the bottom, these are going to be consistent. I try to always think like how things were made in real life, and that really helps me in visualizing how things are modeled. Um, yeah, let's, that's good for now, actually. That does a sharp angle out, but I think that's okay. I'm aware of that. Okay. All right, so there's our blade start. All right, now this part, I knew this was going to be a little tricksy, so let's kind of, let's see what we can do here. I am going to go in and do a multi-cut. I got my symmetry on. And again, I just like to do these 50s, 50%, 50 pop in the middle. It just makes my OCD brain happy. Now I could, to make this more round, put an edge loop all the way in here, and I may, no, let's, let's do this instead. these. I also like to favor one side. Uh, on this one, I've kind of been favoring the left. Um, because if I do that, 
And if I'm hopping back and forth and I kind of goose something and something does get off kilter, if I accidentally turn the, the symmetry uh, on or off when I don't want it to, um, if I know that I've got a good left side or a good right side, the side I've been working on, I'll keep it and I'll go and delete the other side and mirror it over, which uh, we'll get into later. But um, yeah, so I just kind of like to stay with one side first. I just want to make one and duplicate it over. So let's grab my uh, little box down here, Control D to dupe it out. And I will take this off center because I know that I'm making a piece that I'm gonna replicate and uh, we'll merge and do all that fun stuff here in a minute. So not a big deal. If you know it's gonna stay in the center, keep it in the center. All right, so now we'll go and uh, something else is kind of a cool tool when you uh, go to rotate. So the E key, just letter E, E as in elephant, Elmo. Hold down J, as in Joker, and it will snap to angles. I think it's like every 15 degrees or something like that. And this has come in handy. Like in this case, I'm just it's kind of organic, so I'm not going to matter. It's not going to matter too much. But uh, uh, sometimes that saved my butt. Sometimes I'll put things on a 45 degree as much as I can on purpose, just in case I have to rotate it back if I need it back in a straight up and down. When you take things off center in Maya, it's a little risky because sometimes it's really hard to get it back. Um, if you know you're never, I'm never going to bring this edge piece into the center, so that I, I know for a fact that's not going to matter. But in some cases, it uh, it can kind of bite you in the butt. I'm going to put this in here and just put this across here, and then let's grab these. Oh, the symmetry's still keeping those for me, huh? See, it didn't grab all of them because why? <laughs> Now, if I go in and out on this as I bring it up, so I'm grabbing this, I know like it's mo just moving it on this plane, right? On just what would be the, the y-axis. And because the symmetry's on, it's kind of killing me. So let's turn that off. And there we go. Let's free form it up here. Um, let's go there and let's bring this maybe down here. Alright, so now, because I know those probably got messed up, and I do like things in the background to be consistent, double select. Now, if I go to scale, and if I scale in both directions, it'll put it back in the center. Okay, multi cut. Hey, look at that. It goes all the way around now. And it's somewhat flat. Let's go, let's do my 50. Do my 50. Now, I could keep going. I could fill this right up, but I like to do general to specific. I'm gonna grab all these, and I'm gonna put those in place first. Let's do the middle one, maybe. Just kind of straighten this up. Now I'm giving this one a little more attention because I know I'm going to duplicate it. And I can go and adjust it later, but I'd rather not adjust a bunch of them. I want to get this piece because I know I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, I want to get this as close as I can to where I want it to be. And this gets a little further than most blockouts would. Um, but because I've got this ornamental piece here, I want to get this goodness about where I want it the first time. It'll save me time later. I'm not saving as often as I should. I, I do have the autosave set up, but you know, just uh, control S does a save. Um, be careful because just S, just S will add a key, like an animation key. If you just do S by itself, see how it shows these red lines. If you ever see it over here, that means there's an animation key on over here. And when you go to do other stuff, uh, like delete history or, yeah, let's do that. Let's do, uh, 
um, modify freeze transformations, and that should zero this stuff out. But down here it says it can't because it has uh, translate X has incoming connection. That's this animation. All because I hit S instead of Control S. Um, don't be afraid, like that that happens with some things, but most hotkeys aren't that bad. It's just that's one of the worst is S. Uh, but now, if I were to go into it and do modify freeze transformation, see down here, we're fine. And I like to do modify freeze transformation, edit, delete all by type history, and that wipes out your history, which can alleviate some other problems. If mine is doing something janky, every now and again, sometimes this history gets really, really long and it just does weird stuff. So control S, just be a little more deliberate with that. Or if you're afraid of doing that, you can just do file, save scene, and then that tells you everything saved out okay. So. Um, now if you get too far into it, I mean, I, I've done a bit of work. I've done a bit of work. Uh, I do have my autosaves going, but I do also like to do file, when I get to a good point, file, save scene as, and the reason I like to do this, uh, you know, 001 is now I'll go and pop it to 002. And that way it just kind of helps me keep track of uh, my iterations there and uh, helps me I don't know, so don't get too too lost. Like if something happens, it doesn't happen too often with uh, saving your files. Um, actually, that's something we talk about too. File, save scene as. Now you can. The default is Maya binary. Uh, I don't know why that's the default, but it is. Uh, Maya ASCII. This is more stable. This is less prone to crashing. Um, I was told years ago just always save an MA, not an MB. Just do the just do the MA, and then save as. I'll replace it. Yeah, I'll replace it. So I'll always do uh, an MA file. Okay, so let's make all of these a little skinnier. Um, sometimes the more you can select, the easier things will go for you. I feel like sometimes selection is half the battle in Maya. So if you can come up with like clever ways to select stuff, that's what I was saying earlier about like if you can kind of select something and select the inverse or something like that. And I'll look at like different angles, see how the slope is coming. And this isn't looking too bad. And again, this is getting a little nitty gritty for a block out. I normally don't go this refined, but I know that I'm gonna re I'm gonna dupe this out. And so I kind of just want to get this in a good spot. Um, now these also look like they're pretty like if I were to like look down the side, like they're diamond shaped. That's what this is kind of implying to me with the way the shadows are going. So I'm gonna do that trick I did a minute ago. I'm gonna get rid of this. Hold it around, yep. And we'll do uh what is it? Shift, right click, delete edge. And I think so let's do this again. What if I just do like this and I just hit delete? It does delete it. It looks fine. And you're like, ah, everything's fine. Well, at least behind all these little extra vertices, which are a pain in the butt. Now, if I select everything, the whole thing, or key select everything, and then hit delete again, it will take those out. But if you just shift right click, um, excuse me, you have to be, it, it's also like a, a situation specific. So if you go to edge and then, you know, you're on edge, delete edge, right? But if you're on vertice, you have vertices selected, it's gonna be delete vertex. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, I'm gonna go to here. I'm gonna grab this one. Shift double click. And I grabbed it all the way around. Now again, I don't want it to grab everything. Let's go to ghost mode. Because I don't want it to shrink these in. Because if it does, well actually maybe I do. Well, I can use it later. All right, let's go shift right click, merge collapse edges, collapse edge. Now I've got this cool triangular thing going on here. All right. And now what I can do even is uh, let's, I wonder how thin this might be. This is, here this is getting a little thick. Can we, yeah, let's just squish this whole Actually, I don't like that. Let's do edges. Okay, I'm not in symmetry. Let's bring that back. And 
let's do maybe that one. Now I'm going to shift select, grab the whole thing to inverse my selection. I'm gonna go R, bring this in. Oh, that's because I didn't grab these. This is where I like to do vertex mostly. Grab these as an edge loop, click one, double click. Okay, shift select, there we go. See, now it's not grabbing those. The edges did, but the verts didn't. It's crazy. So bring these into something a little more reasonable. Yeah, I think I like something like that. Now let's do this one. Click one, shift double click. I think I'm looking for like these edges, this gradation. I wanna get some roundness in here. I wanna get this to be See where the blade comes in in here. Again, it's not perfect, just blocking out, but I try to keep in mind to get stuff lining up because the more I do now, at least in lining up and getting the shape correct, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried about the silhouette. I'm really worried about how it uh, looks if I were to paint the whole thing black, right? If I were to just make a silhouette out of it. Okay, that's not too bad, okay. Oh, this is working out. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. Now these are kind of clipping kind of funny, but we'll we'll fix that here in a minute. Because I was just kind of eyeballing this piece anyway. Um, so now I know that I don't want these. Probably that one either. I do on the bottom one though. So this I'm just going to delete. And just regular old fashioned delete does just fine on those. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm going to control D and W to get the move, move tool, spacebar. All right, now I'm gonna hit D. And now if I click something, it will orient it to that piece, right? Then I can also slide it. Right, and to get super fancy, if I want to hold V, V is in Victor, I can snap it as well. So it gets kind of crazy. Uh, w or really E, R, anything like that to, to get out of the tool. Um, I'm gonna put this right over here and get this kind of on top of that. And then I'm gonna rotate. I'm kind of just lining up about the middle of this to get to the about the middle of the other piece, like, is why? Okay, something did something funky. Did you see that? See how these are getting off course there? That's not good. We don't want that. So it's probably the pivot got moved, right? So what I can do, actually, go out of the D key. Uh, if I hit this button up here, right up here, this little triangular thing, this uh, center pivot resets the pivot. That'll reset it. And I can hit D, and instead of snapping it again, if I want, I can even just kind of eyeball it if I want to, right? Um, is this gonna, oh, that's still, that's still messed up. Okay, so uh, I'm glad this is happening, actually. Oh yeah, see, it's angled funny. Oh, because we're on this angle, that's why. So if you go and I was snapping it to this, see how that's on an angle? We don't want that. This one is still vertical, so as I rotate it, it will work just fine. So sometimes you just have to snap it to something new and it will, Grab it like you needed to. All right, there we go. So now I can rotate it over here and it's not doing anything weird. Much better. Okay, let's do a soft select thing we we're looking at earlier. Let's do the vertex. And I'm just gonna grab, I don't know, these. Make sure you got them all. Hit B, B as in boy. Now if I hit it, it just turns it on. If I hold down the B key and middle mouse button, middle mouse wheel, drag right and left, it changes the size. Now it can't go smaller than what's already selected, but if we just kind of go, I don't know, let's go about there. And then again, I move this gizmo around a lot. It's just, and again, if I grab it by this, it stays on that plane that I need it to. Um, let's bring it down here actually. R to scale. Ooh. Okay, overall it's not doing too bad up to a point, but it gets to about there, it gets a little squirrely. So let's go 
I don't know, let's even just grab these ones. And let's do the B key and middle mouse drag to go a lot bigger. Now see what's not lit up is not going to move. So let's just see if this works. Okay, R. Yeah, see that's that's not jiving. That's that's not gonna work. Um, so B, sometimes there's selection. If this the original selection's weird, it will do weird stuff. Okay, so B. So sometimes I'll just select a few more things to kind of just compensate. So it looks a little better. D as in dog. Bring this back down. R as in Ralph. Ah, much better. Now, it's not going to be perfect, and that's just kind of what it is. However, okay, turn soft select off. Let's do object mode, and we'll rotate it into place. And again, this was mostly just to get something close enough. And once you get this one, this one will be much closer. This other big one was a whole different piece. Um, in fact, what I want to do is I want to select my background image and this and isolate both of those. Just get everything else out of the way. Alrighty. All right, W. And this is going to be a little bit of an adjustment. Well, let's start at the bottom. Hmm, symmetry. Let's turn it off. Oh, see so what just happened there? If I'm off of it, click off of it, and I go to hit vertex, it'll grab it. But if I'm off of it, and I'm doing vertex somewhere else, it gives me this other weird menu. Hover over the object. And it'll do uh, do what you need to do. Let's see, just eyeball in here. You can't see, but I'm tilting my head, you know, like you do, and you look at something kind of funny, you're like, is that right? And this is what I'm saying, like if you get too many vertices in here, this is a lot of adjusting. This is where if you can block something out and get it, whoops, closer, just by block out first, it makes things a little bit easier. If you have to adjust, 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 it just takes a lot longer. And again, I can always come in and adjust this later. I am just trying to get this as close as I can because I'm duplicating things out. That's the biggest thing. If you're going to make it once, or if you're going to make it twice, make it right, right? Measure. Measure twice, cut once. It's the old saying. Control D. Duplicate. And because we're not shrinking this one down as much, it's not. Oh, see how the pivot stayed down here? Sometimes it'll do that, which is kind of nice. Um, but we're not shrinking this one down as much, so it's not going to distort it quite as badly. So, um, again, I can. Whatever I did over here with like this gizmo, I can take the middle mouse and like usually drag it off of an object and like hold it down, hold the middle mouse button down, and then just kind of like go right, left. It's another way to get a little more detailed without like killing your wrists so bad. Okay, we've got E to rotate, R to scale, because alphabets, and that's not looking too bad. Um, let's grab the image behind us, the image, and these, and Let's isolate those. Oh, let's leave that on. Yeah, that's not too bad. In fact, we'll just grab those. Isolate that, and this kind of gives us... Sometimes I will turn off wireframe just to give me a better idea of what I'm looking at. Because, yeah, let's look at that. That's got... What's bugging me here? Right here. ghost mode and back to my wireframe and let's just do those plus the image I just know I'm clicking on that back image and okay so again this is gonna be a little tricksy so I had all three selected I'm clicking off of them okay edge loop I know it's grabbing the whole thing well actually it's doing something weird 
this is where these multi views. Okay, so my camera's feeling a little weird. Hit F, and now it toggles it way easier. Just sometimes it does that when you're zooming in and out and zooming in and out. Uh, just hit F, and it'll realign your camera and probably save you some hell. All right, let's get rid of this face and this face. And now, what I'm going to do, I've got three separate pieces, and I want to stitch them together. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to mesh, combine. Okay? Now what that did is it essentially glued them into being one object, even though they're not even touching. What it also did is it created uh, these extra little transform nodes that we don't need. So every time, just for just organizational sake, every time I do a you know mesh combine, I will grow and go to um, edit, delete all by type history. And what this will usually do if Maya's not doing something funny is it gets rid of those, most of them. See, we still have two. Um, and just select them and just delete them. You don't need them. They don't do any good. Now, sometimes if you don't delete history first and you delete those transforms, it will turn everything bright green. And that means you lost your material too. So uh, do um, edit, delete all by type history first. And you'd be good to rock there. Uh, so yeah, if I select one, it selects them all because it's now one object. And now what I want to do is with that concept, in fact, let's bring that back. Okay, I'm just gonna see the background. Down here, there is a little piece in between. And I want them, I take this piece and this, these two vertices, merge to center. And now I'm going to do a couple ways I could do this. Um, I could go here and I could, uh, whoops, extrude. And I could bring that out. And I could take this and target weld. Click on it so I'm not doing any funny things. I'd like, they need to be unselected. Drag it, drag it, and that can work. Another way, so I'm going to do W to get out of the tool. We can go to, um, where is this one at? Uh, mesh tools, append to polygon. I can take this, this one's kind of cool. I can click on one here, and these purple arrows show me which direction it likes me to go. You don't have to go that way, it just kind of helps you remember what you're doing. Click that one, click that one and then hit enter. And hey, I've got a polygon probably faster than the extrude gave me. Now, again, if I do the G key, because if I extrude this out, then I'm gonna have a four-sided face, and then I'm gonna have to collapse those two vertices. But if I do the G key and do this append to polygon again, then hey, super fast. So G key, append to polygon, enter. Not too shabby. I guess saying there's a, there's a million and a half ways to do things in Maya. Uh, some of them are just more efficient. All right, so I'll do that one and that one, and we'll do merge vertices. So again, I'm doing a shift right click, merge to center, and let's do, what do these look like? These have a piece going all across the bottom. That probably, Is that where I need it to be? Maybe let's go here. I still want to keep this ridge going nicely. Of course, you move one, gotta move a bunch. And then if I go, I want to bring it up here, not down here. So this is where things get a little squirrely. Um, let's delete these. And mine has gotten weird of selecting faces from the other direction. Maybe it's a back faces issue. I don't know. Um, let's see. So now I want to get rid of both of these. Yeah, see, it's not grabbing that either. Ah, drives me nuts. It, Maya did not used to do that. All right. So this. Go to here. Yeah, that's probably. Let's fix this first, actually. Bring this up and in here. Probably add more geo there later, but uh, we can do that later. I might even actually bring this down here first. Do I want to do 
that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna multi cut and go to the other view though. Let's go multi cut. Now I'm gonna have to. I don't want to send an edge loop all the way up. That would be crazy. So I have to remember which one to start on. So this one here. And I'm just gonna go half, half. Again, I'm holding down shift and then just clicking close enough to it. And I remember it was this one that I terminated to. Double check because I'm paranoid. Okay, W to get out of the tool. Extrude. And I'm gonna go to this view and I'm gonna go to this one because again, I wanna pull it out flat for what I'm doing exactly. I'm gonna stop here. And now if I hit G again, G is in a uh, gorilla gator. Grab that so I can grab this flat again. I wanted to get an edge here so I can merge those together. I'm gonna bring this one. Let's go one here in the middle. And I can even use this to turn it a little bit. And then G for good golly. And then let's put this one maybe here to line up with those. And we can kind of, so this outside one does the camera view. We're in orthographic, so it wouldn't matter. But the inside one goes on that, uh, that plane. Enter, okay, and now shift right click to multi cut. Go over here, here, and here, and enter. Much better. All right, so now I've got like this is looking weird with like the lighting, it's doing weird stuff. We don't want that. Object mode. Uh, really, it's not hurting anything, it just shows you there's something strange here. So I like to clear these up when I see them. So we'll go to uh, what is it, mesh display. And then you could go harden the edges or soften the edges. I like to do set to face first because it sets it to the face and kind of clears it up and then do hard edges or then do soften edges. We're going to stay hard edges for now just because it helps me see what I need to see. So you took that right out. Alrighty. So now that this weird kit bash thing is where it's at. Yeah, that was not... Not the best way to do that. See, now I have an end gone here. I've got this five-sided shape and that is not good. So we're gonna handle that next. An easy way to do this is if I just eliminate this piece, this edge, shift, right click, delete edge, four sides, good to go.
So this is a super messy way to do this. I would probably not ever do it this way again, but I'm kind of glad this happened because I'm showing you some uh, some different stuff here. Like I said, sometimes you just got to get in and do a little surgery. Sometimes stuff gets a little messy. It's just kind of is what it is. Um, usually it's not this bad. This is more of like you're in a bind, something got ugly, something got messy, something got messed up. Um, but normally when you're just blocking stuff out, things shouldn't get that ugly. And really I probably could have just deleted it and started over, but I was just being stubborn. So there's that. Now what I do want to do is close this up. All right, so now, see all this history over here? Don't want that. So I'm gonna go, uh, where are we at? Modify, freeze transformations, edit, delete all by type, history. Now, my gizmo is in the center. If my gizmo happened to be up here in the middle of this, um, what I'm about to do would not work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the D key. Okay, so anyway, D. Zero, 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 enter. And that's just a good place to put it. Um, again, we're gonna do modify freeze transformations and that just zeros all this stuff out over here. And then we're going to edit, delete all the type history. And now W to bring that back. I'm gonna go control D. Now, if you look over here, I just duplicated this, and they're right on top of each other. So I need to do something with it now before I forget about it. With one of them selected, it doesn't really matter. I can go to the scale X because I want to put it on the other side. I'm going to mirror it. And this is just a quick and dirty way to mirror it. And I can go negative one. Boom. Now I can also take both of these, and I can go mesh combined. Now again, they've got these. So I'm going to go these uh, empty transforms. So I'm going to go edit, delete by type, history. But now, those little guys are in there. Now what I probably also need to do is thicken this stuff up a little bit. Looking at this and how thick this is, uh, I was kind of matching the blade, but this is kind of where you need to like be measuring against other things. This is pretty, pretty chunky. Um, I could pull these out a little bit, but I think we're gonna do a little bit of both. Well, let's do a little bit of both. Also, a clue here is looking at this, this ring piece on the bottom is thicker than these pieces. And here, I've got them almost the same, and that's uh, probably not correct. So let's, let's take advantage of that. Let's fix that. All right, so we'll go uh, edge loop, and then we the symmetry back. In. And I know this goes at least probably even just about to where that sits. And I think we'll just go a little bit thinner than we are, were. Well, that's good. So after looking at this for a second, I think let's do something a little crazy. Look at this image. Let's rub it down. I'm starting to think that these might be, this might be the same thickness the whole way through. I have a little gradation in here, but that's pretty close to the same thickness. So let's do something a little, a little crazy here. Um, and this happens. I mean, sometimes part of it is just working up to stuff. Just, let's see. So let's, uh, F to find it our focus and then let's go isolate let's bring this up let's go vertices truly what I think I'm gonna do is take all of these pieces and we'll double select it because my is doing this thing now all right so V snap I want to snap to this corner I think I'm gonna make it all this thick and let's go R and whoosh. all right now grab this side Okay, D key, V, snap to a vertice, R, oh, there we go, 
right, right in. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, that's looking better. Now here in the center, we do have this jewel piece and this stuff sticks up. So I think this is gonna be, it's gonna work out just fine. All right, let's grab this, that. I'm gonna take this whole big thing and we're gonna do a mesh fill hole. Make it work. Hey, it works. I know it's gonna work, but you know. All right, so let's take this and let's draw one of these over here. Now I'm gonna take off the symmetry for this because it gets a little weird. Um, if you ever grab a random tool, you don't know what happened, just hit W, it'll pull you back out of it. All right, let's grab this one and those are in the center abouts. Grab this over here. Another reason I did, what was it, 16 on the radius here, is I can go through and again, just select every other one and draw right through it. I've got these pie pieces. And look, we've got how many sides? One, two, three, four sides. Look at that. Cool. All right, that will work for now. Now we will do... Let's get this jewel in here now. Let's do uh, okay. All right. Now I was saying earlier about uh, rotating this. If I grab the yellow, that's camera view. That's that's not what I want. If I grab the blue or like a, a colored rotation, and then hold down J as in Joker. We bring this to a 45 degree angle. Hey, we've got a diamond, look at that. Oh, look at that. Okay. We've also got the crisscross in here. I don't know that we're gonna need that. I might actually get in my way. Let's get rid of those. Let's do delete edge, shift right click. Okay, we want the symmetry back on. Actually, okay, my symmetry is putting me up here. I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is two things. First, get out of the tool. Then I'm gonna do modify freeze transformations. That zeroes this out. And now just to make sure that the symmetry can say, oh yeah, there's something on this side and this side. I'm gonna do a multi-cut. And put an edge loop down the middle. I really try to keep edge loops down the center of almost everything if I can help it. All right, that's better. So now, bring this down, we'll match to the gold first. Looking pretty good. Okay. All right, so now I do something else kind of fancy. We're going to go face and select these and these. So both sides. I'm keeping both views up here for a second for a reason. And I'm going to go extrude face. What I want to do is just bring it in. Not that way. Sometimes you just have to test it. Is it like based on the direction it's facing? Is it offset or thickness? Thickness is what I want. Now I'm going to go over here and this little box will come with me. Okay. I'll go back over here. And I'm going to do... Let's actually take off symmetry, because extrude works better without symmetry. Um, and then we'll hit the G key. Oh, it didn't like it. That's fine. We're still selected. Extrude face. See, it looks different. A minute ago, it had like a weird little gizmo on it. Um, it just works better without... Symmetry. All right. 
And this I might do in texture, but we'll start with it like this for now. And we'll just see what it does. And then we'll do one more. Let's go G. I'm going to center this again with a little uh, on off switch. I'm going to hit one of these boxes. And I'll bring this in. So let's go like that. And then let's pull it up and back out. Let's go all the way out. And what I should have done is get our multi cut. Actually, let's do it this way. That way I've got one that cuts right down the center. Oh, we've got something weird happened here. That's okay. We will fix that. Yeah, we don't want that. Oh, that's so what I did. pushed it forward. See, it's consistent here. But pushing it forward is what messed it up. I should have done this instead. See, now they're both the same. Okay, now let's go multi-cut. And now let's just go to there. These are going to be off, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Vertex, grab that one, grab that one. R to bring them both down to the same spot. And then we're gonna go V, grab the arrow, and snap to here. And we go R again and pull them out. And I may even Grab all four of these. See, this would be easier to fix a moment ago. That's okay. We can still work on it. Now this is going to sync them in. That, if I grab the center one, then I can push this and push them back out. See, I just want to round them off a little bit. Not too much. Actually, that might be out a little bit far. That's probably better. Nice. Okay. Now this blade, this whole thing, we just kind of sink this in. And the nice thing is this does work on kind of a gradation, so it will actually just grab it it won't shrink everything in exactly the same. It, it doesn't do as much here. It kind of like does it on a kind of on a percentage almost. Um, let's go about yay. That's well, let's go. Let's go split the difference. Because looking at the concept, I think it's gonna it's gonna come out and this meets with it. But the center of the blade is much thicker than the outside of the blade. Like this is gonna still be triangular. So let's earlier when I left this thicker, I did that knowing I need to adjust it, but uh let's ghost mode. Let's grab all four of those. Sometimes it is just an adjustment. It's just a just to work with it just a little. Kind of the Goldilocks theory, right? Like uh, not too hot, not too cold. We need it just right. All right, and now on the concept, these do have some flat edges as it comes in here. Those aren't sharp, but they are not this. Then let's see, we still have, no, we do not have that. We need to get our symmetry back because I was about to mess something up. OK, 
Okay, want a nice even transition here. Because again, you think how the metal's been forged and cut and ground down and shaped. That is looking much better. Okay, so now we're gonna to wanna to blend these two together in a way that works. So I'm wondering if this goes as thick as this is. I bet this piece Just a bit, something about this. So sometimes like the, the 3D version of what you're working on doesn't always match up with the concept. So we're gonna do symmetry off. So you just kind of need to adjust it just ever so slightly. Still keeping true to the form as much as you can, but just, just ever so slightly adjust things. Because not only does it need to look at the concept, it needs to work in 3D. And if it doesn't work in 3D, then well, where are we at with it? Okay, so now probably take these. Let's get the vertices. I'm gonna grab these inside ones, get my symmetry back. And I'll probably grab those as well. And we might need to grab more than that. Let's what does this do for me? This I might regret this. In the soft selects again that's just the b key b is in blend saving again just gonna stretch these out you know that's not too shabby i don't mind that that's actually doing a pretty good job but let's make it smaller so hold down the b key middle mouse button drag let's go about there Uh, now let's turn it off, just hit the B key. All right, now these I will need to refine. In fact, I'm seeing an edge here that needs some love. Um, so let's isolate it. This right here, again, Maya doesn't know what to do. This is why we try and get this stuff, is in the game engine, for one, everything gets reduced to triangles anyway. Believe it or not. For two, Sometimes the game engine will guess, or the rendering software will guess which way you want your polygons to go, and it doesn't always guess right. I'd rather not leave it up to the engine. Sometimes it's just not stupid proof. Okay, and we'll grab these. I would say for a block out, this is not looking too bad. Some of this stuff got a little more detailed than anticipated, but uh, I think that's actually working out pretty well. I think uh, a detail thing will be in here. This will need to become, this will be pushed out. This will need to uh, bring down. We'll just do that real quick. Because this does follow that. We actually probably want to bring this up instead. This is what switch views often too, is uh, you just never know how, actually let's let's snap that. Let's go just straight up, because if I snap it, I might snap it into the forward and back as well in the, in the Z direction. But let's just snap it up one direction and snap it over the other direction. And this one we can snap up, V key is in victor. Oh, we didn't grab them both. V is in victory. Beautiful. Spot on here. All right, let's turn this off just to kind of see. Oh, that's looking pretty sweet. 
this, we can actually go to uh, Mesh Display, set to face just to clear it, soften edge. Oh yeah, still needs some work, but uh, we're getting there. I'd say for a block out, that's not bad. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop her for now. I think this is a good block out. Again, thanks for watching.